What's going on guys? This is Badger coming at you with a stock Sunday watch. Today we're going to cover a couple of things that I have on my watch list over here on the Badger list. Um, and we're going to kick it off first with the indices. So looking at uh, where we ended last week, things were red across the board as you can tell. Um, everything here is, is as of Friday's prices. We have not had futures open yet today, um, so here's where we currently left off. And a couple of things happened on Friday. So the two major theories going around are that CNBC and a bunch of other media outlets have been covering uh, the Delta variant. Cases have been going crazy, supposedly. And so some people think that the market is coming down because of the Delta variant and the cases and vaccines and things like that. Um, gr given that we had the Fed, uh, we had Jerome Powell talking to Congress on, I believe it was Wednesday and Thursday. Um, he had a little bit of a dovish stance as he always does, danced around a lot of questions. And, um, I, I personally think that the market is kind of tired of, of hearing that everything is fine, right? Everything is obviously not fine for some people. Um, they see housing prices they see gas prices oil like all these things are going on and uh shortages everywhere in chips and you know whatnot and so i think a lot of people are frustrated with the fact that jerome powell just wants to say hey everything's fine it's transitory but at the same time they're also saying things like you know this was a little bit more than we expected as far as inflation goes it's well above two percent da 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 right and so on and so forth so I am leaning towards the fact that the market was just having a little bit of digestion um, from the Fed meeting. So the positive around that is that um, there was nothing said that would indicate that we're raising anything as far as rates are concerned. We're not doing any tapers uh, for bond purchasing, things like that. So with that, um, no news should be good news, right? Because as far as we know everything is okay everything's in control and we have to, we the market kind of has to take jerome powell as at his word um but the market can react in its own way and it typically will digest things and you know have a little bit of a fit um especially as all the fear and uncertainty looms around the time where we have the fed meetings or testimonies um so what we have going into this week is um, number one, it's, it's good that all of this happened towards the end of the week. We have a nice weekend to kind of get over it, so to speak. Um, and so looking forward, what we have coming up this week is earnings. So earnings has kicked off and has been kicked off last week. It ran uh, with a lot of the banks. Um, and this week we're getting bigger names, things like uh, Netflix, Coke, um, Verizon, Ally, IBM, you know, all the big names. We have a lot of airlines too, UAL, LUV. Um, and so we're looking for, I am anticipating that if we can, if the market gets over the fact that, you know, the Fed didn't say anything, we're good at least until uh, next week's FOMC meeting, I believe Tuesday, Wednesday, then things should be relatively greedy here. Um, a big indicator is going to be on how the numbers are, are moving, right? On, on what do the earnings look like, um, how are companies doing, and it will give us a little bit more insight into, Monday will give us insight into, you know, how the market is truly taking all of this in uh, with the Fed and things like that. So enough talk about that. Let's just go ahead and get into uh, the charts here, right? So first thing we have is NQ. Um, as we can see, the past two days, this is the daily chart. Past two days have been red, right? We opened up, uh, we had been wicking, and I had mentioned this on the Discord a couple times, like once we get into these uh, wicking candles here, that shows that there's a lot of pressure up top and uh, a lot of selling pressure, and it's, it's going to be hard to hold these levels. Um, indeed, we responded in kind, and we did come back. We broke through that support level that we've been holding, um, and every, as everything kind of you know melted down, a little bit on Friday, uh, we're back here testing around this little minor support. Um, something to look for if we do see some downside is will we test like this 14, uh, 600 area 
And if we do, this will be uh, the 21 EMA. How does the support hold? If it holds, we may see some come up. Um, and at that point, this line again will be another resistance that we should test uh, to see how the market's doing. Now, it doesn't, the market does not have to, especially during earnings, the market does not have to keep going up, right? We, we are already in the top of the channel here um, that we've been in for quite a bit. And so while we have been overextended past the channel before, it doesn't necessarily have to happen again. What can happen in earnings is that we see individuals reporting, right? Let's say we have Netflix reporting and Netflix just kills it and it runs up like crazy. Um, big moves of, of, you know, big caps and things like that can carry um, an industry, to, so to speak, right? It's obviously Netflix green by itself is probably not going to carry nasdaq but uh if we have enough of that type of greed running around it can at least hold us to, into a chop to where maybe we bounce around here for a little bit or you know maybe it even pushes us up but the thing to consider is that just because this is coming up especially during earnings does not mean that the market is just shaking off all fears. We do have the FOMC meeting coming up that could easily, um, especially if they talk about bond uh, tapering, could easily bring us back down. We have a lot more room uh, within this channel to move downwards than we do upwards. That doesn't necessarily mean anything, but it is something to consider. Um, so going into this week, what we're looking for is how are we going to open up uh, today with futures? Uh, how are we gonna test this bottom if we do get to it? And how would we test the top if we do end up bouncing off of here? All things to consider. And if we do end up passing here, um, can we break these all-time highs, right? Uh, and if we have enough gas in the overall industry, then you know things like Apple, Microsoft uh, could continue to see some upside. Um, okay, so let's move on over to the S&P. So on the S&P, similar type of channel here. It's obviously not as overextended. Um, on the recent time frame here but similar concept uh we didn't have as big of a wick on these last couple days we did have a big push down on this day we still ended up green but as everything kind of melted downwards um we find ourselves closer to the support line over here and closer to the bottom of this channel so the good news right is that things are relatively healthy right we're, we're pretty much at this 21 uh ema and as you can see through the past, um, the chart, or sorry, the, the candles, the price action tends to stay around the 21 EMA, right? So from that perspective, it's relatively healthy. That doesn't have nothing to do with the fact that the markets are overvalued, undervalued, whatever. We're just talking about how the CMA moves along with the market typically in this uh, short, short span of time. So what we are looking for on this is you know same thing with the nq how are things going to open are we going to open up downwards are we going to test the bottom if we test the bottom and we break the support you know maybe we test the bottom of this channel if that breaks through or maybe we just have a fake out here like that where it extends through but we kind of hold this next support stay intact here in this level and push back up that's going to be what we're looking for um it, it's not always about okay well if it's tomorrow is red then we're confirmed that things are going to go down no not necessarily tomorrow could well be red and we just make a, a very strong uh recovery so what we want to be looking for is how do these supports hold and if they do hold how does the resistance on top hold do, do we just break right through it right uh, especially coming out of a fed meeting there's a lot of fear um, and uncertainty around those meetings so there's a lot of price action that i consider to be um, a little bit fake, right? It's more emotional than it is um, an investment, so to speak. So what tends to happen is we have, you know, big sell-off days uh, as if, as the market is anticipating a certain outcome or a certain reaction, or maybe they just don't like a certain word like uncertainty uh, that comes out of Jerome's mouth pretty often. Uh, and what happens is, you know, they react. People want to protect their money, so they get out. Um, but then they realize that, hey, you know what? things didn't change rate high uh the rates didn't hike uh bond purchasing didn't stop uh things are okay so we're good for now and and you know inflation's still transitory as, as far as we're concerned so then things kind of recover so that's kind of what we want to look for especially with earnings coming up and kicking off a lot of people get pretty um greedy during these times they want to have lotto plays things like that um but the big thing to consider as well is if you're holding 
um, stocks positions with uh, earnings this week. Profit taking is a thing, especially in this you know time where everyone's kind of uncertain about what our economic landscape looks like. Uh, so do keep that in mind as we're moving forward. The next one we have here is YM. In my opinion, YM, uh, the Dow Jones, is the most healthy of the all three. Um, the only downside here, you know, as things are running in tech, um, there's just not a lot of movement through here, right? Uh, this right here was the last Fed meeting where, you know, they talked about banks and things like that. And this was around the stress test. Things came down, bounced perfectly back up, uh, stayed intact with this trend that's been there for, you know, ever. Um, but the the hold up here is that we've been in this price range here at this uh, 37 or sorry 34 700 level right for since may we've been here since may bouncing around these levels uh this will be probably the strongest little channel here that we've had recently um but it's maintained this uh trajectory here so what we want to look for in dow especially with um certain environment the the certain environment being relatively i guess it could be bad news for tech um is we want to see things kind of rotate right this has been um somewhat of a lagger uh comparatively and if we were to break out of this you know resistance here that we've had uh, we could see some pretty good upside and if we saw some upside on that on on the dow you, you'd see things like ba um disney and other types of value stocks and things like that um make a push which has kind of been lagging a little bit. So something we're looking for here uh, is that we want to hold this level, right? We don't necessarily want to uh, touch down. We're still intact here. So depending on how we open up uh, today in a couple hours, if we open up down here, you know, maybe we're trending towards, you know, either testing this 21, testing this line or testing this bottom support here. And if we do, we want to see, okay, can we rebound pretty strong and make a break uh, that's even stronger than this one was here that didn't tend to hold so much. Um, this was a really good break though overall. And in a second, I'm gonna pull up Disney that had a similar pattern here in, in the recent past um, to where we came up on a big move and we held above a pretty stubborn resistance level. Um, but as the entire market came down and as uh, the Fed delivered that news with the testimony, everything kind of came down as a whole. Um, so we're really looking to see how we, we rebound from that reaction going into a um, earnings week that's relatively bullish for a lot of people uh, historically. So um, just to kind of keep that fresh in your mind. So we have this right for YM here going into Disney, right? Boom. Here it is. That's that same flag pattern. Um, Disney broke out of a downtrend here. Um, and was able to hold above this 182 price level and was doing really great with some consolidation. Um, but as everything melted down, you know, Disney followed suit and also came down. So something that we're looking for Disney, I currently have a position on Disney. Um, I have some post earnings uh, positions that are, I believe, 182 strike and 180, uh, 185. So I'm I'm holding them. I my exit originally I got one of them at this uh, level here above 182. Um, originally I was thinking, okay, if we break, you know, this out of this flag, I'm gonna get out, right? Because the the pattern wasn't alive. It broke, whatever. Um, but I did stay in all my positions because um, number one, the whole market came down, right? So I'm I'm not. If it was just Disney, just breaking down by itself, the whole market's agreeing, um, then I'd be a little concerned. But everything came down, and because everything came down, um, it, it's it's safe to say that there's some level of uncertainty, some level of fear um, wrapped in that. So I decided to hold. Um, so now what we have here is a resistance level here at this red line, which is 178, 75-ish area. Um, we also have the 21. We have the 100-day EMA as support lines as well. And what I'm looking for is to at least reclaim this 162 era area. Uh, we are currently at 179.31, so we'll we'll see how that responds. Um, but I am looking for this to at least hold and maybe push back up over this 182 area. Um, so let's 
check out BA. Another, well, another note uh, for Disney is I know Disney and Netflix are not the same company at all, but with Netflix reporting, um, whether it goes up or down could be good for Disney. Uh, if Netflix has good re report on earnings and says, you know, hey, subscribers are up, blah, 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 uh, things are good, then that could be pretty bullish for Disney because Disney does have Disney+. Plus. And if Netflix had an increase or a better beat than they did last time uh, on the subscriber front, then that could mean that, you know, the same sh could be expected for Disney. Doesn't translate at all, but the market tends to react that way um, in a very assumptive thinking. Um, and a second thing for Disney is if Netflix goes down, right, maybe they miss, that could still be bullish for Disney. Um, and the reason why is because Disney is a competitor in that space. With Netflix and so if you know maybe Netflix is losing subscribers or whatever that could mean and doesn't necessarily guarantee but it could mean that uh, maybe users are moving over to Disney um, in place of Netflix just because of better quality quality or you know whatever it may be um, okay going over into BA now so BA I am pretty bullish on for the long term uh, this over here was obviously pre-pandemic levels. Um, they are definitely not the same company right now. They don't have the same sales. They don't have the same demand in the industry, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but needless to say, BA is important to, um, you know, the nation's security. So it's definitely not going to be something that goes away. Um, so something that we are looking at with BA is that it's been in a pretty consistent channel um, back since you know, the whole crash happened. Um, and as it tends to happen, we get into a somewhat of a descending wedge, pop up, descending wedge, pop up, descending, pop up, descending, pop up, descending, right? So something that has changed though, and there's a little bit of skew here, um, is that every time we came down, there were higher lows, right? And we came up to a higher high. So on this most recent time, we came down, still a higher low, um, but it was not a higher high, right? We didn't even really break this here. So as this comes down, we would have thought, okay, well, maybe if we maintain a higher low, we'll be okay. But it didn't necessarily go that way. Um, as the whole market melted down, and we've had a bunch of bad news for BA over the past week, uh, things came down a lot, and we actually broke into that 217 area, which is a relatively uh, good area of support, but um, it's still, you know, it, it, puts, it puts us under the 200 EMA, the 100 EMA, 21 EMA, um, and gives us lower uh, a lower low. So if this holds, you know, that could be pretty bullish, um, especially given the history but on the flip side, um, you know, we could easily see, you know, 2.5, 2.10 area come down if this does not hold. So this is something that I do have a position in. Um, I do have a little bit more than 30 days in this position left before it closes. Um, and I am holding. And I, I originally, you know, when I was looking at this, people were like, okay, well, why are you holding? Uh, it obviously, you know, you just made it sound pretty bearish. Well, because the whole market melted as a whole... Um, I really liked this candle here because it went from very strong selling to having a lot of pushback, finding some support. Um, as the whole market melted down, then we got a lot of the sell-off here. So with everything else, um, just based on how I tend to see things in the market go, um, I'm anticipating that we at least have a dead cat, a dead cat bounce. Um, so yet to be determined, but that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this level to hold here. And if we can bounce, uh, I am looking to see which resistance um, that we find a stop at and just trying to see what is fueling that. With this uh, up week, or sorry, with this upcoming week uh, being relatively bullish in my opinion, uh, yet to be determined. Obviously, we'll know more on Monday when market opens. Um, I I'm thinking that BA could have a decent move up. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean it'll hit, you know, 250, but it, 230 could be a realistic target uh, in the short term if things tend to have a look up. All right, moving on. Um, Airbnb is something that I found 
today. That looks relatively interesting. So uh, market lows or all-time lows are in the 120s, right? 120 area here. It's come up all the way to about 216 area and it's been coming down. So obviously we are still in somewhat of a downtrend here, which does not look promising at all. Um, but what is promising on the other side is that this area of support here has been tested before uh, where we had this range come down just a little bit, still stayed intact and then came back up. So with Airbnb, I am looking to see how this level tests and if it, you know, tests here again uh, in this range, it could serve as a good entry to come back up. So something to note is that the 21 EMA has pretty much held it down. Uh, it did struggle here and try to overtake it, but um, it did run into this lower trend line here and then knock it back down. Um, as we run out of room to go lower, I am looking for this to hold. And if this holds and kind of can break through strongly out of this pattern, um, it would make a good opportunity for a long position. On the other side though, um, if this line here was to get a clean, strong break, we could, um, potentially see lower all-time lows so it's definitely something to watch in my opinion um, I will be checking it out and yeah all right the last two we got we have chewy here so chewy is something that um, I just recently started watching uh, recently tested this low area down here of uh, 65 and has been in this channel for a while. It, once it bounced here, which was a previous um, area of support, it did come back up over the 76 area, but as we find ourselves again with uh, three back-to-back -back red candles, um, we're testing this 76 area again. Uh, this does seem to be a relatively strong support level, um, and given that the market for the last uh, three days was you know, a lot of um, involving of a lot of fear and things like that, I could definitely see this making a push up. Um, things are definitely some, uh, we have to get some confirmation before we just jump into that, but we do have the 200 EMA here as well as the solid line of support. Um, if we try to break upwards and test these, this, this right here will serve as a pretty good area of support. And if you can even take a look, we do have, boom, these areas here to where it's actually made a somewhat of a small support. Um, I don't like to mark that because it's not as clear for me, but it is in the form of this uh, 21 EMA and 100 EMA. So definitely looking at Chewy. And the last one here, which has been on my list for about a week now. Um, so Roblox was moving up just a bit. And I was looking at entry here, this... Um, 86 level then it decided you know maybe this 82 level <laughs> but apparently it just kept coming down right um, and then you could even no you can't even do that but so I, I was I was looking at this for entry um, it just never really took shape but as it finds itself having form um, we find ourselves at a pretty strong level here of what could be a support level um, and just with the other stocks how we said that you know the past week has been pretty volatile um a lot of fear and things like that these past few days have been pretty red for roblox we do have earnings coming up i think uh in the middle of august and so this to me if we can hold this 76 uh, 90 area would be a great point of entry um, if we're breaking downwards Obviously, you know, unless you like playing the short side, I would stay away from it. But personally, I am pretty bullish on Roblox. Um, it seems like they generate a lot of money, have a lot of users, things like that, always growing as subscribers or for the most recent, you know, past. Um, so I definitely would like to look at Roblox for an entry if we can hold this area here. Um, and the easy price target for me personally would be this 86 price target. Um, and that would just be, you know, coming back to where they fell from. And they've just had, you know, a few bad days that just took them pretty low pretty quick. It's like, what, a 10-point move or so? Um, 
so definitely checking out Lo Roblox. This, from a bullish candle perspective, is nice that there was some support here. To They actually came down to this 75 level and pushed back up, and we had an increasing um, low here. So that is definitely something to watch out for. Guys, that is all that I have. I hope that this kind of helps. Uh, please, if you have any questions, let me know. I'd love to hop out. Um, good luck this week, guys. Always get confirmation before you enter a trade because just like this example here where I, where I thought this may have been a bottom, uh, there's always and always more downside. So good confirmation before going up. The moves, if you spot them, will be worth it if you just ride them up at the right time, even if it's a little late. Uh, stay safe. Keep in mind the FOMC meeting is coming, and don't get caught holding the bag. See you guys later. Make it a great week. I'm out.